Uh, good morning, my, or good evening, my YouTube viewers. It's Crystal here. I wanted to do a, <clears throat> a code review with you, and I wanted to be talking about binomial distribution in probabilities. And so I got this code from someone called Elijah Apatia, and uh, he had a YouTube video where he was talking about binomial distribution, but he was talking about binomial distribution in R. So I've got the code here pulled up <clears throat> that we discussed in R. And so basically I was just going over all of the code that he went over in the video that he made. And so this is what it is in R. And this is the the answers in R, the responses in R. So, but what I wanted to do is I took the code that he wrote in R and I translated it into Python. So I think that's what I'm going to do in this video is I'm going to take the R code and that has already been written by Elijah Apaya and translated into Python. So the first thing that we're going to do, and in, in this, this video is about binomial distribution. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to do a coin toss. And so for the, we're going to import NumPy as NP. So N equals 1, that's your <coughs> number of tosses. And P equals 0 0.5, which is 50% probability. So np random dot binomial np gives you a zero. But we can try it again. Gave you a one this time and a one this time and a zero. So you have like 50% probability of whether you're going to have heads or tails. And so you don't know whether you're going to get a heads or tails because it's random. And then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to do a fair coin. And so we're going to flip the coin 10 times. And you flip the coin 10 times to make a fourth loop. So 4i in range 10, n equals 1, so that's 1 time, probability equals 0 0.5, that's 50% probabilities. And you flip the coin 10 times, and you can see here we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 4 heads, and 6 tails. But what we can do is we can try it again. And you see we've got one, two, three, four again, heads and six tails again. So there's your 50% probability. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take our bias coin in favor of tails. And we're going to flip the coin 10 times, but it's n is 1. And then probability is 0 0.2. So that means you flip it. Um, you've got a 20% accuracy, 20% probability that it's going to be a head. So that means it's in favor of tails. So in this particular example, you have only uh, three heads and seven tails because it's in favor of tails. And you can try it again. And you've got two heads and eight tails. So that's in favor of tails. So now what we're going to do is we're going to flip the coin in favor of heads. Would you get that please? We're going to flip the coin in favor of heads. So you're going to have 80% probability. So for I in range 10, N equals 1, P equals 80%. And so you're going to have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine heads and zero tails. So we can try it again. And you've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven heads and three tails. So every time you run the program, because it's victim, you don't know what you're going to get. So now what we're going to do is we're going to flip 
10 tails, so 10 coins at a time. So N equals 10, P equals 50%. So NP dot by formula NP. So we flip the coin 10 times and we get five heads. So now what we're going to do is we're going to flip the coin 10 times by 10 times. And so you can see when we put at 50% probability. So you can see um, every time you flip it 10 times you're going to get so many heads so the first time you've got five heads the second time you had seven heads the third time you had five heads the fourth time you had three heads and it goes all the way down so now what we're going to do is we're going to simulate a hundred thousand draws with 10 coin clips at 50 percent probability so we're going to import NumPy as NP, import Pandas as PD, import Seaborn as SNS. So we're going to create A, which is going to be an empty list for I in 100,000. N means you flip, you're going to flip it 10 coins. P equals 50%. So flip equals NP dot random dot binomial N comma P. And then so we're going to append all of our flips to A and then we're going to do SNS disk plot. We're going to create a, a histogram so you can see the histogram that's been created and A equals PD data frame A but I think that should be series really. It should be series really. And then print A value counts len A. So you've got a value count. So uh, you get five more than anything else, which is close to 25%. Print mean of A. So your mean of A is a five. And then you see you've got your hist histogram. But we're going to try this one time since I've made this a series. So there you go, we made a series and it works well with the series, just as well with the series. Now what we're going to do is we're going to check the density of the binomials. So in order to do that, we have to import scipy.stats. So from scipy.stats, import bicom. So for five heads, with the 50% probability, it's going to be print by home.pmf k equals 5 because you want 5 heads, n equals 10, so you're going to flip it 10 times, and p equals 0 0.5, which is 50% probability, and so it's 20.246, which is close to 25%, which is what you would expect. So now if you want 10 heads with 50% probability, the K equals 10, N equals 10, P equals 0 0.5, and then so your probability is 0 0.0009. So you're going to have a very low probability of getting 10 heads. And then when you check 10 heads with 80% probability, so K equals 10, N equals 10 and P equals 0 0.8 and so you're going to have 0 0.107374 so your probability increases um, with that amount. So now what we're going to do is we're going to check our cumulative density. So probability of getting four heads or less equals by home dot cdf k equals 4 n equals 10 p equals 0 0.5 so you're going to have a 0.3769 probability of getting 10 heads or less or four heads or less now if you want to get more than four heads 
it's going to be 1 minus bottom dot CDF K equals 4 N equals 10 P equals 0 0.5 and so your score is going to be 0 0.623 so you can see that the 0 0.623 and the 0 0.3769 equal 1 and the next thing you want to do is you want to find the probability of getting six heads or more. So one minus bind home dot CDF K equals five, N equals 10, P equals 0 0.5. And so your uh, probability is the same as it was in the first one. Now what we're going to do is we're going to find the mean and variance of a simulation. We're going to simulate 100,000 draws with 10 coin flips and 50% probability. So we import NumPy, Panda, Statistics, and CPER. And so we're going to use the same four loop that we used before, but we're just going to print the mean. So print mean of A, comma, that's going to be np.mean A. And that's going to give you a 5.00203. And then we print variance of A, which is going to be um, 2.49. And again, we've made a histogram so you can see the histogram and 5 is your highest. Uh, we're going to do another piece of code where the expected value and variance of binomial distribution of 100 coin flips at 30% chance of getting heads. So we import our libraries. We use the same for loop that we have previous used, with the exception that the probability is 30% and not 50%. And then so we do a histogram of that. You can see the histogram. And so we print mean of A, which is 30.03. And then we print variance of A, which is 20.939. Because we have um, the range is 100,000. And the N is 100. And the probability is 30%. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to check the probability of two random events. We import our libraries. So A is an empty array and B is an empty array. For I in range 100,000, N equals 1, P equals 50%. And then we do flip equals NP.random binomial NP A append flip. So that's for your A. And then the, we have an identical um, for loop for B. And so we do bin B append flip. So we make A a series and then we make B a series. And then we print A 0 to 10 and print B 0 to 10. And then so tote A equals A and B. So we print tote A. So we, we print tote A, so you get your tote A here, 100,000, but we also print tote A dot value counts. So we had 75, 245 zeros and 24, 755 ones. And the reason why is because if you have 50% probability of two events, and the two 50% probability each of two events, then it's going to be 50% times 50%, which is going to give you a 25% probability that both of those events are going to occur. So that's why you have about close to 25% ones, which is your head, and close to 75% zeros, which is your tails. So now we're going to do the same thing. We're going to have a probability of two random events. A is 20%, B is 70%. And so basically what it is, it is the exact same 
four loops, we just put different values into the for loops. And then uh, when we put the different values into the for loops, we do tote A and B equals A and B, print tote A and B, and then we print our value counts. And then when you print your value counts, it's going to be 140621s, which is your heads, and 85938, which is zero, which is your tails. And the, re and the reason it comes up with that because um, 20% of 70%. So 20% of 70% is about 14%. And that's how it comes up with that figure. And it's proved it with the computations. So now what we're going to do is we're going to check the probability of two random events, A or B, because the previous code, it was A and B. And now it's going to be A or B. So we're going to use the exact same for loops that we have previously used with A and B. And your tote A and B is going to be A or B. And your print tote A and B. And then you've got your value counts. So you've got 74, 8, 7, 9, ones, which is your heads. And you've got 25, 1, 2, 1, zeros, which is your tails. And so what that means is rather than having A and B, which is means that both A and B had to be a 1, so you only had 25% of that. Now it's A or B, so A or B can be a 1. So now your probability increases up to close to 75%. So now what we're going to do is we're going to use the exact same code that we used before, but the probability in A is going to be 60%, and the probability in B is going to be 1%. But we're going to use the exact same for loops for that. And so we check our tote, AB equals A or B. You print your tote, AB, so we printed that, and then we print our a, B value counts. So we had 1 is 64019, which is your heads, and 0 is 35981, which is your tails. And now what we're going to do is we're going to multiply random events. So this is a little bit different. So we're going to import our libraries. X is going to be a blank array an empty array. We're going to have um, one for loop of 100,000 iterations. So n equals 10 and p equals 0 0.5. And we're going to randomly flip it. And then so we're going to check our mean and our variance. So your mean is 4.99, which is close to 5. And your variance is 2.5. So you can check your mean and your variance. And the next thing we're going to do is we're going to add two random events. So we're going to import all of our libraries. And now what we're going to use is X and Y are going to be blank arrays. And the uh, four loops are going to be exactly the same, except we're going to append the data to X and we're going to append the data to Y. We're going to create a series from X and Y. And then what we're going to do is we're going to check, print the mean of X, which is um, let's see, the mean of X, which is 4.9, and the variant, variance of X, which is 2.48. We're going to check the mean Y, which is 5, and the variance of Y, which is 2.5. And then what we're going to do is z equals x plus y. So we're going to check the mean of x plus y, which is uh, 10, and the variance of x plus y, which is 5. 
So when we take the x plus y, uh, we just add x plus y, so your mean is going to be double that in this instance. And now we check the mean of z because we created z equals x plus y. The mean of z is 10 and the variance of z is 5. So the mean of z and the mean of x plus y are the same and the variance of z and the variance of x plus y are the same as well. And so the, these are just exercises that we did for binomial distribution to get the feel of binomial distribution. And I got these exercises from Elijah Apicus uh, video, and he did those in R, and I just translated them from R to Python. And you can see here's the code in R. And if you did the code in R, then you would get exactly the same values because I just translated it directly into Python. So, um, I'm going to go ahead and conclude this video because I've covered the code with you and I would just like to thank all of my subscribers for supporting my channel. If you like my video, please like, subscribe, and share and thank you very much for watching my video. I look forward to making more code reviews for you in the future.